but I was hoping the last video was the last time I was going to open this card, but evidently not. However, I'd rather open it up again, change the pads, than for the memory to like cook itself to death. So there is that. And of course, if you're wondering, I'm using my trusty iFixit kit as it is very trusty in times like these. So there's four Torx heads around the back plate here and they are, well, very annoying to remove as it seems like every single screw's got a different size head on it for this for this card for some reason. It's not really a problem with AIBs, but for the Founders Edition cards, they're notoriously like difficult to take apart. See, these were Torx heads here, but these are Phillips heads, which is just like, why? Just why? PH1 head should do it. If I move my wrist out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing. And open sesame. These pads on the back I won't be changing today purely because one, I can't be bothered and two, I don't have the actual thermal pads on hand. I think they're three mil thickness. And to top that off, I don't think they're actually causing the problem. So there is that. Right, this is the part that actually requires a bit of finesse as there's quite a few ribbon cables on this card. But the amount of times I've taken this apart now, I'm kind of a master at this. So this one's a harder ribbon cable. Sometimes I tend to get the SIM removal tool on my iFixit kit go under ever so slightly. And then just sort of like pry it out and then it just comes out. It is quite of a nuisance this one is because there's not a lot of leeway on it. And the last thing you want to do is tear it because the bottom fan won't work. And lastly, the cable for the G-Force lighting is pretty easy to remove. Or is it? There we go. And then just before the core is the leaf spring which holds the heatsink over the GPU core. And this is pretty easy to take off to be fair. Put that to the side. Right, I've already done a bit of work on it as I opened it up last night and I've already changed one of the thermal pads there so I won't be changing that one today, maybe, maybe not. But the main problem is these ones here, they're like really brittle for some reason and it's they're not going to transfer heat that well as they just like crumble apart, like if I show you now. Yeah, they kind of just crumble apart. So these are probably no good and these are what I'm strongly thinking of causing the memory problems on this 3080 as you can see they're just a little past their sell by date so let's get them changed get some isopropyl alcohol on here to get rid of like, the residue and just bits of like, just residue and just rubbish that's left over so we can put our arctic tp3 i believe the thermal pads are called to be honest they're not probably the best ones for the 3080s as jellied extremes do tend to be the best or is it ultimate it might be extremes anyways they're going to be links in the description below i'm only using the arctics because they're like the I only ones I had on hand and I didn't want to buy any more, so yeah. Jellied's the ones I recommend. Actually thinking about it, these do look like jellied extremes, but they're just like really just past their sell-by date. They're like really dry and just they're not very good at conducting heat anymore. And when they get sort of like dry and like cracked out like this, they're more of a heat insulator, if anything, which obviously isn't good for memory temps. And feeling the VRM pads, they feel totally fine. They don't feel as brittle, they feel a bit more squishy, so that's good there. These don't need to be changed, which is a relief because well, I kind of can't be bothered. <laughs> There's the first layer, don't forget, Obviously the one mil pad, so we need another layer as well. So that's obviously gonna have to go on there. There we go, there's four RAM chips done. There we go, there's the sole RAM chip at the bottom done. Now it's time for the 
well, the the right or leftmost for RAM chips is depending on how you look at it and depending how the cards mounted in the case. Regardless, they're about to be done now. And I know the Founders Edition catches a lot of flack for like how just not ideal it is for a lot of things, but to be fair. It is engineered quite well, as I've probably said in the previous video. And it's really easy to put thermal pads on the RAM chips as well, because it, like the cord has just got it like, just cut out for you already. So it is quite easy to do. Certainly a lot easier than an RTX 2070 I had to do back in the day. But in all fairness, that was the first time I ever changed thermal pads. So I was bound to not be that great at it. Now I didn't get the positioning perfect on this top one, so I'm going to re-place it, I guess. Try and line it up a bit better this time. That looks a bit better. There we go. And last one of the 10 RAM chips. Yeah, I know the 3080 should have been a 12 gig from right from the start, but you know what Nvidia are like. They're a bit apprehensive of putting VRAM on their graphics cards, and they still are to this day, so... Yeah, it does make my job easier for today, perhaps a bit, but yeah, I would have liked to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So NVIDIA, next time you're making graphics cards, please put some VRAM on them. We, we, we do want VRAM. We zoom the camera out a bit. Yeah, that looks uh, pretty good to me. It's looking like we've got good coverage, particularly on this side and up there. That one, the coverage isn't the best, but to be honest, it's covering like 95% of the RAM chip, or that's what I suspect. So. I don't really have that many reservations about this and hopefully it all goes back together just fine. And I'm going to clean up this area like this. And there we go, the power of editing is a magical thing. This time around, I'm gonna go with some regular thermal paste. This is a new tube of Arctic MX4 I've got. And it's kind of ironic that the original time of me doing this, or the whole point of me trying to fix my RTX 3080 was putting the cryo sheet on there but I have ripped it ever so slightly and I don't want to put it back on the, the core because it might not connect with the cooler properly and there might be bits of silicon showing. Also, if the thermal pads are a bit too thick, I don't want it dangling around everywhere, potentially shorting something because it is conductive. So some regular Arctic MX4 should be enough for the rest of the working lifespan of this GPU. And if I ever need to replace it, I'm a bit of an expert in taking apart Founders Edition graphics cards now, so yeah, that's not really a worry. That should be enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it out as I always do with GPU cores as you literally need all of that silicon covered in thermal paste because if not, you're going to be getting horrible, horrible hotspot temperatures and potential like premature shutdowns of the graphics card to stop it from just overheating itself to death. So let's cover the whole of this GPU core, eh? might need a slight little more here that should do the job there we go that looks like pretty good coverage to me and i'll put a tiny blob on the cooler just for good luck right now it's time for the reassembly and to be honest this time it should be a bit easier so i don't have to worry about a conductive sheet in my graphics card so yeah there is that and even then, it doesn't make it less of a pain to put this thing back together. It's like an absolute, well, it can be a bit of a nightmare to put these graphics cards back together. But as soon as you've got them back together, hopefully your memory temperatures, well, in this case, should be pretty decent. And of course, you've got your ribbon cables, which we like to say here are an absolute pain in the backside for a more PG version of it, I suppose. And particularly this one here is like the hardest one. It's it's really finicky and annoying, but as soon as you get it in, you're more right. There we go, there's one down. And then we've got the other ribbon cable. This one's extremely easy to put back in. And now we have the GeForce logo lighting. This one's quite easy to put back in as well. There we go. And then you just pull that little latch forward. There we go, it's all hooked up and ready for all the screws. Right, we've passed the hardest point with all the ribbon cables and putting those back in. It's time for the leaf spring over the GPU core. Tighten it down evenly. You don't want to press it down too much on one side because 
yeah, that could result in a pretty bad mount or maybe even worse. Back in the old days, it used to crack the actual silicon of a graphics card or a CPU, particularly back in the day. So you look, oh, I haven't even put this one in properly. But yeah, there were CPUs back in the day before the times of the IHS and like if you didn't tighten down the cooler evenly or tightened it too much, it would result in cracked silicon and then obviously a CPU which wasn't working. Luckily, graphics cards and CPUs are engineered much better these days. Well, in the case of the 13700K and like the rest of what, well, any LGA 1700 CPU, the ILM isn't too great on those, but for the most part, it's much better than what it used to be like 20 years ago. I realized I made a mistake. The light diffuser kind of like fell out of the graphics card. So I've got to like kind of just take it apart again to put this back in. But that's probably a good thing actually, because I can see what the thermal paste spread is like on the core. And if it's good, we know the thermal pads are at least not too thick. So there is a positive there, I suppose. Okay, that contact looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that and hopefully the memory temps, which you can see is they've kind of like compacted down, which is a good thing. And yeah, it looks fine. So hopefully the temps on the core, the hotspot and the memory junction is going to be looking fine now. So let's just get it back together, hopefully for the last time in quite a while now. Almost at the end of it now, and we do need to put this back plate on before testing because it is actually kind of crucial for temperatures. But not to worry as it's gonna go back on anyways. And then last but certainly not least are the Phillips head screws towards the middle of the card. And then once these are all done, that is the last of what we've got to do, apart from putting the nice fancy little heatsink cover silver thing on. And then we just mount it in, run firm art for a bit, I reckon. And then we'll just see what the memory and core and hotspot temperatures are looking like. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the temperatures are going to be okay, but you never know with these Founders Edition cars that seem to be a bit temperamental with their temperatures. So there we go. That is hopefully a repaired 3080 or improved. And good news, my PC is booted like normal and the RTX 3080 is putting out an image, which is always great after doing some work on a graphics card but it's looking like the idle temperatures are looking pretty decent. We're hovering at just below 30 degrees C with the fan on, which is pretty reasonable because it is kind of hot in here today. And hot spots about 10 degrees above that, which is pretty fine. And the memory junctions hovering around the sort of the mid thirties, which is looking good so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up some Furmark as this does push graphics cards really hard. The memory, I'm not too sure. We could run up some games in a bit for that. So let's just run 1920 by 1080 stress test. And I'll load up HW info to pull up the sensors and see what they're reporting. And after about a minute worth of GPU load, we're in the, well, at 70 degrees C for the memory junction, which is very good on Micron GDDR6X. As we saw before, it was like peaking at like 108, 104 degrees C, which technically is within spec for this memory, but yeah, that's not really good for longevity and I, I'm i just not comfortable with those sorts of temperatures. And it's looking like the two millimeter or one times two millimeter thermal pads are working quite fine and they're not too thick for this graphics card. Core temperatures are hovering around in the 65 degrees C range and the hotspots at around 83, which is totally fine for an RTX 3080. So it's looking like these thermal pads are well the right size for this graphics card the founders edition rtx 3080s are a bit weird because some batches have got two millimeter thermal pads and some have 1.5 millimeter and it depends when your gpu was made i believe this is a original release 3080 as it's not an lhr and these are the ones with the two millimeter pads. The 2021 models are more often LHR models and these have got the 1.5 millimeter thermal pads. So check when your GPU was made if you want to change the thermal pads on the 3080. So one thing I can say for sure is the Arctic TP3 thermal pads are holding up very well, especially with some of the hardest memory to call on the market. Hopefully I won't have to change these into the short to midterm because to be honest, I just cannot be 
bothered to take this graphics card apart again as there's just like five million different ribbon cables and there's five million different screw types it's really annoying so hopefully i can finally put these RTX 3080 temperatures to bed. It's kind of ironic, I think, that the whole reason this has been a problem in the first place was I wanted to try out a graphene pad for the core, and I'm back on Arctic MX4 for Arctic MX4 thermal paste now, so that's kind of ironic. I went one step forward, two steps back, only to go one step forward again, so I'm in the same place as to where I started. But the GPU is working now, and at the end of the day that's all that matters and i did get some content out of it as well so if you want to see how well i'm trying to find a video for you to watch anyway if you if you want to see another pc gaming related video there's one up there for you with that being said i'll catch you in the next one